Welcome to this celebration of Holy Communion according to the Book of Common Prayer for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. After the Creed, I shall give a short sermon. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands that love of, in them that love me, and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day, that six days sh shalt thou labour, and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou, thy son, thy daughter, thy manservant, and thy maidservant, thy cattle, and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Collect for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the Spirit to think and to do always such things as be rightful, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without thee, may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptised unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as, some of, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. 
neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are were written, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayst be no longer my steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of the Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest you? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write fourscore. And the Lord commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Here endeth the Gospel. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We all know that the eighth commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. So what on earth is today's Gospel parable about? The various Bible commentaries that I have and study books all agree that it is one of Jesus' most difficult and challenging parables. It seems to be celebrating and condoning a dishonest steward for defrauding his master. The morality and ethics seem to be all back to front. Luke himself gives a rather disjointed ending, concluding with the well-known epithet, almost, that occurs in Matthew's Gospel as well. You can't serve two masters. You cannot serve God and wealth. Or, as the King James Bible puts it, God and mammon. So you sat there quietly listening, 
but I bet you didn't shout, that's wrong, hold on, that's scandalous. Jesus couldn't be serious in telling this story, could he? Surely he must have delivered this parable with his tongue firmly set in his cheek. Just kidding, everyone. We all know that stealing is forbidden in the Ten Commandments. I was just seeing how many of you were awake. But that's not what St Luke says. Money has an extraordinary power of its own to corrupt people, to distort their view of what is right and wrong without anybody else trying to egg them on. I imagine many of you have heard a lot about the various excesses that led up to the banking collapse. Greedy and devious bankers selling on really high risk loans bundled up in such complex financial packages that it was too late before the banks found they were going bust. And the Western world's banking system went into meltdown, causing a crisis and global recession. Then there were the rogue stock market tra traders gambling billions of pounds on, of other people's money, including my and your family's pension funds, on a share market that spiralled out of control in the wrong direction. Then there were the LIBOR fixers. Now, LIBOR is the interbank inter lending rate that underpins trillions of pounds worth of loans and financial contracts which enable countries and businesses to function. Some of Barclays' employees conspire to make money for the bank and bonuses for themselves by rigging the system, fixing the LIBOR rate at a false level. The scandal resulted in £290 million fine for Barclays Bank and the resignation of its two top executives, as well as the arrest of some rate fixers. And the scandal is unravelling similar dealings in other financial institutions as the investigations go on. In July 2018, after the longest running criminal trial in Irish history, three Anglo-Irish bankers were jailed for between one and three and a half years for a seven billion euro fraud in 2008. The men were described by the judge as dishonest, deceitful and corrupt. Oh, and have we forgotten about the 340 members of parliament of all parties, including government ministers, fiddling their expenses? They were even being encouraged to do so by the clerks in the parliamentary fees office so they could maximise their tax-free mortgage repayments by fibbing about which house was their real home. I remember in 2013 there was an expose by BBC Panorama called Tax Lies and Videotape. A government tax advisor was secretly filmed offering tips on how to keep money out of the Chancellor's grubby mitts, as he called it. David Heaton, who went on to advise Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs to av on tax avoidance, was secretly filmed at a London conference for people trying to avoid tax. It cost a thousand pounds per ticket to attend and he told the audience how to exploit maternity pay rules to get the government to pay your own bonuses. Yet he said he did not advocate, advocate artificial or abusive tax arrangements. Two months after the conference, entitled 101 Ideas for Personal Tax Planning, Mr Heaton started to work on the key HMRC panel. His job was to advise them and the courts about artificial and aggressive tax avoidance a poacher turned gamekeeper, as it were. So why am I reminding you of all these financial scandals? Well, people who become city traders and bankers, who become accountants and financial advisors, don't do so because they want to become criminals. They are clever and ambitious and discover they are skilled in the financial sector. That skill, the long hours and perhaps some good luck, brings with, them, brings with it and to them great rewards, large salaries and possibly some amazing bonuses. The trouble is, for some people the six-figure salaries and bonuses, or the compensation package as it is euphemistically called by city people, are not enough. They crave more. A bending of the rules here, a turning of a blind eye there, a generous and untraceable favour to a third party leads from temptation to corruption. They move from working harder and harder to make money to working harder and harder how to hide how they made it. 
Let me ask you the question that Jesus was challenging his audience with. And it's a simple question. Are you one of those people who will fall in love with money, not the good you can do with it? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to what the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Well, what about the riddle of Jesus' parable? Well, it's about forgiveness. Forgiving others and being forgiven, no matter what. Well, the dishonest steward is discovered by his master, whom he defrauded, but rather than be arrested, he is forgiven. And by his steward's action, the master sees he is also forgiven the debts of, owed by all those other people. Both he and they have been freed from the slavery of money, their master, Mammon. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth where rust and moth doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. And whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, even so do unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, for us it become the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. By the mystery of this water and this wine may we share in the divinity of him who humbled himself to share in our humanity, that we may share in his divinity. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, for us it become the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Lord, cleanse me from my sin and wash away my iniquity. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority unto her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, or near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and abounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, with thy tender mercy, to give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he is coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for thee, and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Receive this spiritual communion in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this and remember that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. Our 
our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and sac lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.